Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today we've got a new product to unveil for you from our good friends at Ontario Knife Company. I got my buddy Matt Catney's here to show it to us. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Doing great, man. Doing great. Excited to be able to talk to you. I see you're uh, rocking the uh, quarantine haircut over there. Yeah, I got a little bit of length since the last time we talked in <laughs> January. So, you know, like Maybe. I said earlier, it's getting grayer and grayer every every month. Maybe we'll do the smart Alec thing and put a before and after uh, photo up yeah. from our footage, maybe. <laughs> you probably could, honestly. <laughs> so what do you have for us today? Uh, so we wanted to actually talk to you about one of our new products that we have coming up. Uh, it's called the Bessera. It's in line with the Shikra. Everybody remembers the Shikra from, from January at SHOT Show with the uh, linen micarta scale and the, the titanium frame lock OS8 blade. So what we ended up doing is, in line with that, we decided to create another option for people with a little bit different uh, uh, blade shape. So this is this is the new best right here. And I know you have one there as well. Yep, you were kind enough to send off. us a, a sample here, which is quite nice. Yeah. So we wanted to give people another option, give, uh, you know, give them something a little bit more robust in terms of like a sheep's foot blade. Um, same internals, basically, basically everything is the same with a little bit difference in the in the uh, handle profile. And then obviously the sheep's foot blade, all the internals are the same, all the materials are the same, uh, pocket clip reversibility, uh, you know, you got the titanium, the frame lock, the caged bearings, uh, OS8 blade, and the linen micarta scale for a little bit more grip. Uh, same price point as the Shikra, uh, just like we said, different options, something a little bit more in terms of variety. Yeah, it's a great utility shape here, and for and I, I have to say thank you for calling it a sheep's foot and not a Warncliffe. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so I, some folks uh, seem to play fast and loose with uh, with their blade shapes. I, it's definitely a sheep's foot. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, for the folks out there that that kind of like a pocket cleaver, but not like the big honking ones, this would be a good option. Um, yeah. Well, I'll back up a little bit here. I've got the uh, the Shikra, um, the new green handled variant of the Shikra here, uh, so folks can kind of see the two next to each other. Uh, and it is like if, if because I don't carry a Shikra every day, is when I saw the Bezra, I thought the handle was actually identical. Like they're they are a little bit different, um, yeah. but definitely family. Like definitely a family thing there. Yeah. The nice thing about the the two of these is that they're different enough to where you have two totally different knives, right? Like you're not getting the exact same knife when you buy a Shikra or you buy a Basra. You know, if you have both of them, they're very different knives. They feel similar. Uh, the Basra to me in, in particular feels a little bit more uh, slimline. It seems a little bit thinner. I know it's not, but for some reason it just feels a little mm -hmm. bit different uh, in terms of like the makeup where the, the width and the handle is. Um, it might be like centimeters off, but it's, it's pretty, pretty close. Um, the nice thing about these knives, in my opinion, is the durability and the flipping mechanisms. Um, you're not going to get the exact same mechanism in terms of the flipper itself. You can tell that there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, the Besser is a little bit more squared off and the Shikra is a little bit more, uh, like contoured. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm finding that the the difference in the flipping is kind of going towards the Shikra a little bit, and then the Bessera takes just a little bit more more of an aggressive push, but and, not by much. Yeah, I think that's probably something you'd only recognize if you were doing a side by side. I mean, I right. my my impressions of this uh, Bessera have been very good in terms of the action. Like both of these knives have had. Uh, and do have a very good flipping action. It's nice and crisp. Uh, the detents, I think, are tuned very nicely. And even when you close it, it has kind of a nice sound right there at the end, just that little snip. Yeah. It just, it's very well tuned, very well put together, uh, and pretty good prices on them too, I must say. Yeah, the nice thing about the pricing is that they're going to be the same for both, so it's it's nice. It gives you that variation to where you're not going to be spending more for the Bessera if you didn't like the Shikra and you like the Cleaver style or the Sheep's Foot style a little bit more then, you know, it's no harm, no foul. You're going to get the same, you know, you're going to get the same price for it. Yeah. Um, all the same materials, just the difference in, a little bit of difference in the handle and the in the blade shape, which is yeah. great. Um, well, I like that you guys did titanium on this line too. I know some folks were a little skeptical that, uh, you know, you spent the extra money on, on that material there, but I think it definitely helps out with the weight overall. This is a very 
lightweight knife, but it doesn't feel it, it doesn't feel like it's uh, going to be shirking its duties anywhere. Especially this one yeah. with this uh, this kind of aggressive cutting blade shape. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a great utility knife, great work knife. Uh, I could see like cutting carpet with this, tearing down a bunch of cardboard. I like that high flat grind, and in fact, that's probably going to give you a little bit better slicing geometry um, for efficiency's sake over the Shikra, which is nice. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a workman's knife in our opinion. Uh, you know, we love the Shikra because it's got more of a detail point, um, but you're higher up. You know, you you, mm -hmm. you're, you end up higher with, you know, with that spear style opposed to being able to get a little bit more ergonomics on coming down and being flat all the way across. Um, it's similar to what we ended up doing with the um, Carter Prime. You know, very much a workman's knife, or or even the uh, Journeyman too, or excuse me, the um, the original Journeyman with with that sheep's wood style blade. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people really enjoy it because it's easier to use. You get that flat grind, a lot of better, a lot more, um, a lot more knife in terms of, you know, you get a little bit longer of a belly sort of, whereas, you know, this you got to be a little bit more delicate when you're cutting mm -hmm. this you can just come straight across and you get a little bit more out of it so yeah and i've always felt that like this style blade just feels like it has a little bit more power if that makes any sense yeah for the for, you know for those heavier cuts especially when you're just you're bearing down and you're you're just going to town on it yeah it's definitely not for delicate style work you know you can go right at it and it's going to be you know it's going to be fine whereas the shikra you have that point to worry about a little bit more with the best row, you got that flat, you know, that yeah. flat all the way, that line more that comes robust. all the way across. But still, still enough of a usable point, I'd say, for yeah. folks who do like a a, a true worn cliff uh, for the piercing capabilities. You still got a, a good point, I think, on this for yeah, that's going to satisfy that. Um, Definitely. Although you probably, eh, I was going to make a silly statement and say the blade, the drop point on this is almost a modified worn cliff, but maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would say maybe not. <laughs> No, I, that was a mistake. I knew I was wrong as soon as it entered my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold it against you. It's That's good. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I think the only other thing like I noticed that I I want to bring up, um, well, no lanyard hole for one on right. this one, um, but for especially useful, I think, on a knife that, that may wind up in a construction site in kind of an urban center, that sort of thing, whereas the Shikra's blade is a hair over three inches. This one actually, when you measure it from the tip straight back to the scale, is just under that three inch mark. I know yeah. there's, you know, there's some cities out there where you still have to worry about the length of your blade. Um, right. So I think that you know, you, you're kind of opening up to as many people as you can with this style of uh, blade in that size specifically. Yeah, it, it was funny. In, in examining the idea of not having the lanyard hole on this one specifically, the nice thing about this is that there's some openings in the pocket clip in the front, or in, excuse me, in the back here. Um, you got a little bit of room back there to play. So, you know, you can kind of throw something in there if you wanted, mm -hmm. or you have the front of that where, you know, you have your screw access to put, you know, maybe a small lanyard. Um, so that's one of the things that we like about this blade is that you, you have some options to play with even without the lanyard hole, you know? And for most, most folks out there, of course, are tip up people. But for the tip down people that are always uh, every once in a while, they'll pop up in our comments and say, man, I wish there was some more tip down options. There you go. Yeah, we try to give as many options as possible in terms of clipping. Um, I know that with the rat, we get a ton of people who are like, oh, we love it because you can put it on either side. Unfortunately, with this one and the Shikra, you don't have that option, but you still can do tip up, tip down. Mm -hmm which is nice, but it, it's definitely something that we're keeping in mind moving forward with a lot of other, um, a lot of other uh, pieces and items that we're putting together in the future. Uh, we're just trying to be as utilitarian as possible when it comes to our thinking. So um, maybe not on these ones right away, but you know, in the future coming up for some new something pieces that's on your within radar. like the next couple of years, we're yeah. definitely looking at yeah. Yeah, reversibility for sure. So this one, obviously here, these are uh, kind of pre-production samples. We don't have uh, laser uh, logos or anything on this. Right, um, right. We're, uh, we are shooting to have these up for pre-order by the time this video goes out. But uh, when should folks, uh, estimated at least, when should folks expect these to start shipping out? Yeah, so like an estimated time for us to have them in stock is right around January. Um, 
I know a lot of people, they kind of knock us because they're like, oh, well, it was supposed to be in stock in January, and it wasn't. Well, it's kind of like an estimated um, an estimated lead time. So January, roughly, um, it could lead into February. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but well, we're doing our best to get a little bit better on on lead times for people. Well, especially with the way the you know the manufacturing pipeline and and uh, shipping lanes and everything are acting these days. Yeah, you know, stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, a little a little bit more patience uh, is is recommended. Yeah, <laughs> for these times in general, and people have been pretty good. Well, very so cool. we're we're starting to catch up to our our ourselves and our past and trying to be better than we've ever been. And we're starting to see some some good jumps into the future for uh, for us being more on time. So very nice, very nice. Thank you. I've got one more question to throw at you. Um, yeah. During uh, our Blade Show Week video interviews a couple of weeks ago, um, we were asking this question to uh, to all the folks we were talking to, and since we didn't get a chance to talk to you then, I'm yeah. still going to use the question at you guys now. Sure. So for the folks out there who may have not tried an Ontario knife up to this point. What makes your stuff special and why should they be checking you guys out now? Uh, affordability. Uh, that's usually that's in the in the forefront of what we try to do is we try to make everything as easily accessible to our audience as humanly possible. Uh, we try not to bombard people with really high price points. Uh, we also try to keep our blades in-house as much as we possibly can in terms of fixed blades and then importing our uh, importing our our folding knives, but we hold them to really, really, really high standards. And I think that's one of the reasons why people always gravitated towards the rat folders is we do a really good job of QC control. Um, we try to make everything as affordable as possible, as strong as possible, and live up to the warranty as best as we possibly can. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Matt, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to show this to us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Folks, make sure down in the comments, let us know what you thought of this new design. And as I said, we are shooting to have this up for pre-order, so we'll have a link in the description where you can uh, head over to knifecenter.com, get your order in. And again, we're looking at uh, January, possibly into February when they should start shipping. But if you get your pre-order in now, we won't charge your card until it ships, but you'll be first in line, so you'll be the first people to have them. Um, so there's some exclusivity there, that's kind of nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Usually what we try to do is we'll, uh, we'll debut everything that's new at SHOT Show, but um, because that's kind of sort of up in the air from what we're hearing, uh, we wanted to get something out mid-year. Uh, and that might, be, that might be a trend that we follow for, uh, for the future. So, you know, doing stuff like this, I think we're going to see a little bit more of it. And hopefully we can continue to do it with you guys there at Knife Center and, uh, you know, maybe get some exclusives out to people and, uh, you know, see a few more items throughout the year opposed to just doing everything right in the beginning of the year in January. For sure. For sure. Well, you've always got an open invitation here and we're going to be ready to hit the ground running for a, a virtual shot show if we need to do it for sure. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you, Matt. All right, folks, thanks for checking out this knife with Matt and me. Um, as I said, let us know what you think down in the comments. Check out the link to uh, head over, get your pre-order in. And as I always like to say, sign up for our knife rewards while you're there so you can get some free money to spend on, uh, on the future purchase while you're at it. Thanks, everyone. Hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there.